Hello, everyone. Thank you. It's such a great crowd. We just appreciate everybody coming. It's just great hanging out with you guys. Um, we were kind of in the waiting room here, and it's just fun being together. We want to get started. Uh, Joan and I are going to just talk a little business for like a couple seconds. So Joan, introduce yourself, and then I will go on with the business. Hi, Joan Hitchcock here. Sue and I are partners with By My Design. It's our website that uh, we uh, have patterns to sell on. And I'm gonna throw it back over to Sue. All right, and so um, on my by, design, by My Design, if you haven't been there yet, that's the site for you to sell your patterns or to buy somebody else's patterns. And it's just something we thought about for years and years and years. And then, oops, that's my alarm to tell me to hit the record button if I have not already. <laughs> and um, so we got it going and then Karen so graciously was our main star on the, on the page. So if you haven't been there yet, you can buy Karen's patterns there. And you can also um, talk to us later about um, selling your patterns. In fact, we do have a meeting coming up, a question and answer on that coming up. What is, I don't even remember the date now. I'm so, 18th, I believe. The 18th. And you're welcome to come to that meeting. I will put the link to that meeting in the chat. And I will also add that to the email at the end when I send you the recording of today. But, um, so you're welcome to put things in the chat. Uh, Karen's going to do a quick demo and then she just wants to hang out and chat. That sounds fun. And did everybody get a copy of all the wonderful notes and things that you had that will answer a lot of the questions that you had? Yeah. And so that way we can just chill. Oh my goodness, her 27 page, 27 page booklet. Thank you. Yes, I mean, wasn't that gracious? Oh my goodness, that was very nice. So Karen, are you ready to demo then or do you want to talk, talk a minute and then demo? One minute and 32 seconds. All righty. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. And Rick is here, my lovely assistant. Well, my lovely everything. Yes. And um, I love the questions that you asked, super duper questions. And as you know, up till now, unless you've taken a class from me, uh, but this year I've been a little more freedom of sending out my instructions because so many people want to learn this, yet uh, I'm not teaching. And uh, they keep asking about teaching online, but I am computer challenged. <laughs> there's nothing like sitting right next to me as you're doing this. And those of you who are here, you're going to be searching self printing. nothing like sitting next to her. So uh, along with all those uh, directions, that is the revision number eight of my original um, manual that I did back in 2002. So I've been updating it for some time. And you probably saw that there are things where it says, insert photo here, Rick, what do I need here? And so it's not done by any means, but um, it's, it's good information. A lot of it is the correct way to spray, which is so, so, so important. So um, what I'm going to do now, and one other thing before I started is I, want, I wanted to uh, say that I tried the starch because so many people ask me, can I use starch? So here is the the one that I sprayed this, this part of the sizing, I mean the silk with spray starch. And it is just Niagara original spray starch. And uh, did my circles and you can see where the edges got a little fuzzy on there. I would, you absolutely can't get the sizing, start practicing with that, that's a good one to do. This one is the home store perfect sizing, but it did not hold the lines. And this one is, Niagara fabric finish spray. And that did pretty good. So is this all written backwards now? No, it's Maybe. it's frontwards. Oh, it is frontwards? Yeah. Okay, so when I do uh, 
a class and we we design our own pick our own uh, dyes. I named this Alice Yellow because when you look at my Facebook page, Alice is the name of the female parrot. I'm guessing she's female. So when you see any recipes of mine, three would be a dropper, and that's a dropper from my dye bottles that that I that we use in my studio. So that is a dropper. So it took, and number three is 703, which is yellow from my Jacquard dyes. So recipe for Alice Yellow, which is a fabulous yellow, is three big D, number three, one D dropper, number 10, which is poppy, and one dropper, number six, which is apricot. If you see a recipe that has a lowercase d, then uh, that means drops. So this is my experiment to kind of give you an idea of what you can use if you absolutely can't get the, the spray. The other thing is um, uh, Susan just ordered from this laundry supply place and she found a place where she in and I we posted that photo too where you can order it from. Okay, now I'm going to show you the very important thing of undercoating. And in your book, I talked about what undercoating is. Yeah, you have to, you have to, I think, oh, I'm afraid to open this. Oops. But can you see? No, you can't see. I can't see it. Okay. Here we go. Okay, let me see. No, go down. And okay, is this good, guys? This is mix that I need. Yeah. Anybody here? Can you, can you see? I want to mute. Is this, this is what I do. Okay. Is this, yeah. uh, can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. So now I'm using mix on a Q-tip and I started on the, on the top and you want to make sure that you don't apply too much. This is the sound I read. I want to hear from my students. <laughs> So I'm rubbing it in. If you apply too much of this mix, then it's going to be too wet. And as soon as you get your dyes too wet, that's when they're going to bleed beyond your line. I'm applying mix and it's in your, it's in your notes what you mix is. Mix is equal parts of sizing, alcohol, and vodka. So, and this is in your notes. The alcohol suspends the dyes and gives you a little more time to work with them. The vodka kind of keeps hydrating the alcohol so it doesn't evaporate as fast. And the sizing uh, wetens your dyes. So this is going to dilute it just a little bit, but it's gonna help me be able to Get my my silk set up to paint on it. Now, any little teeny weeny spot that you miss is going to grab the dyes, and it will leave that shape that you missed on there. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to be using my brushes, and I have. Them each color coded, and I found this these cute little uh, uh, tapes. And they're washi tapes, aren't they, Karen? They're what? Washi tapes. Washi tapes. I don't know. They're just colorful tapes. They're on Amazon, and uh, so I have so many colors in here that I can put it on my brush. I use one brush per color because as soon as you go in. And you go to wash the brush that you're using for a light color so that you don't get a dark color on it, you're going to lose your light. So this whole thing is, okay, I was cute with my scarf, now it's in my way. <laughs> All right, I keep a paper towel in my hand. <clears throat> you want to keep the dye to the tip of your brush. You don't want to extra load it. I'm going to apply it about a quarter of an inch from the top. I want you to see that my brush is at an angle. Now these brushes I ordered from China. 
They made them to my specific needs. So now I'm lifting up on the pressure to get to that corner. And I'm working my way down. Lift up on the brush. And with this brush, just by lifting up on the pressure, I can get a nice hard edge on the brush. Now I'm gonna go behind my line and move down. So even some of you who have taken a class from me, this is gonna look a little different than I've been doing. I'm gonna dilute just a little bit with sizing. So when you want to dilute your dyes, I don't use water at all, dilute with sizing. And I also added a video today of how to uh, expand your can of spray <clears throat> into a bin. So I just use, and that's the, the directions are in those directions that I sent to you also, or that Joan and Sue did, that was really nice. So now I'm going all the way to the edge. You see when I apply it, I'm staying a little bit from the edge and then working my way into the edge. Finish all the way down there. So I know some of you asked, how do I get such a straight edge from my petal? This is it. And if you look at the very top of the chat, uh, there's a link to Karen's Etsy page for the brushes and she is generously offering some extra brushes if you order the full set. Yeah, the set is $19.95 and I have these two brushes are which I will be using. It's, uh, this is a retouch brush and it is a little, well, I'll show you right now, I've got it right now. I'm gonna go for my next darker color and start shading on here. So the reason that this brush is so nice is that the hairs are short enough to where I can still get this scrubbing motion. The whole thing is scrubbing, keeping it at that angle. So I use different texture, I mean, different pressure. So now to get to the end, I'm lifting up on that and blending it out. So there's two brushes that you are going to get free with your order. And this is the retouch brush. They're both number four, but the, <clears throat> the other brush is um, not, doesn't have as many bristles to it and it will um, still make a nice point, but it, it doesn't scrub as easily because it doesn't have as many hairs. So I'm, I'm adding a little bit so you have to lay it down, move it out, lay it down, move it out. As soon as you leave it on here, uh, matter of fact, my other mantra is inch and blend, inch and blend. So you see that I've changed brushes as I'm going to shade this. If you leave that line or try to set up a line too far ahead, it's going to um, stick forever and ever. Any questions? I'm about done. Rick's back is about broken from bending over here. I see Phyllis Gordon has her hand up. Oh, yes. So go ahead and unmute yourself, Phyllis. Okay. Technically challenged. Um, I, I wasn't able to come to your last meeting, so I'm not sure what the 27 page booklet is that you're talking about. Oh, well, I'm going to uh, put our email in the chat, there it is. Um, so just email us and we'll uh, send that to you. Great, thank you. Okay, now I'm using a DuPont number 164, which is a shade color to get just to the bottom. I like to go one more dark just to get to the, to the very bottom. So this uh, DuPont, I, it's in French. So I don't know the names, I've learned them by numbers. It's 164. And um, it doesn't change the color, it just actually makes it look like a shade. Okay, I try to do this quick so we can get to more questions. But this, along with the book, is going to be stellar to get you started. Oh, okay, so this is called the Whipper Blend. 
And this is a blue shop towel. So if you want to go in and highlight afterwards, this is a, per a perfect towel. It doesn't leave residue behind. And it blends your colors just fabulously as long as they're still wet. Okay. All right. You can get those shop towels at Costco. Yeah. Yeah. And Amazon and any like Home Depot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is what my brushes look like. And that's the set for night for nineteen ninety five. Okay, I'm done. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we have oh we have hands. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Patricia Pope, unmute yourself, please. Am I muted? I'm not muted. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute. Okay. When you get that hard line, when you do get the hard line because you didn't work fast enough, what do you do? Okay. So when you're applying. In that, I would use far, far okay. away spray. And the far, far away spray <clears throat> is equal parts of alcohol and vodka. And you want to have it in a very, very, very fine mist. And watch this mist, just very fine. So, and you want to do far, far away because if you get too close, you're going to get a big glob of wet. And then you have a heck of a thing to clean up. So you can go in, you'll cover up whatever petal is next to it. Alcohol fuzzes up your uh, dyes. Can I see everybody? Can I see everybody? You need to put it on a, a gallery oh. view. Okay. There you go. So uh, when, when you spray this, the alcohol suspends the dyes and it makes the edges real fuzzy. It'll kind of bleed out and go beyond your line. So you wanna cover with a paper towel or something, wherever you've got other petals next to this. But this will allow you to go back in and repair. This is a stellar, a, a stellar a, a solid, a discovery. So it happened one time, I was doing a petal that was probably that big, and I'm just working the final touches on the stamen, and I look up and my whole sleeve had stuck in my tray of alcohol, and here's this big sleeve mark right on the middle. So now if you went in to go fix this after you have painted this big petal, each time you get your dye wet, it reactivates the dye and moves the dye. So as you're doing this, you have to work from this circle all the way out to the edge. So you probably know that once you get it wet again, it leaves a line, it leaves a hard edge. So by the time you do this and repair that petal, it's gonna look different than all of your other petals. So far, now I'm finding out that alcohol dries on my eyes. So I just use vodka and um, there are times I want to try it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. It's this is military, military brand that is horrible. Okay, so you take this spray and you just do this fine mist spray. Give it about 30 seconds for that alcohol to soften your corners. You can go back in and blend with your paper towel, but be careful not too wet. And the other mantra is stay within that spray. As soon as your wet brush goes out from this veil of protection, you are going to leave a hard edge on your on your dot on your silk. Okay. 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 We have a question from Kristen Berry. If you'd like to unmute yourself. Um, I missed the first couple of minutes because I wasn't home from work yet. Um, on the petal that you were showing us with the blending, it had an outline around it. What was that that you weren't going beyond? Love these. That was a good question. These are called um, general sketch and wash. 
Okay, you, so it was like a pencil mark? Quick, um, I get it on Amazon. Do but do do they do they disappear or do they stay on the silk? Yes, with a with a little added little thing like when I have my students use them to put their pattern on their silk, you use it as the pressure of a butterfly wing. Because yes, sketch and wash. It does wash out, but if you push really hard, it's difficult to wash out. And so sometimes, uh, and, and it, again, when transferring a pattern on this, I always say, don't draw arrows, don't draw words or letters. A lot of times I will use uh, numbers on my petals because sometimes they're so involved as to where they come out and go underneath. Don't do any of that because if it doesn't wash out, then you have a hard time explaining that on the finished piece. Yeah. But they do wash out, uh, and I use um, the Sinterpol, and I'm careful not to over use my overuse the pressure on it, and they, they will wash off. If you leave any lines on there, and you hardly see them, when you go to mount, if you would mount on canvas like I do, those lines will come back and show. So yes, use it. I keep my point nice and sharp, and I use with the pressure of a butterfly wing. I see that Colette Katz has a question. Yes. If you want to unmute yourself, Colette. How does she do that? Be sure and get Kay next, Joan. She's been asking a couple times too. Oh, okay. I see her. Sorry. Okay. I was, I, I didn't get the name of the pen. Can you repeat the name of oh, the pen? Oh, General's Sketch and Wash. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Kay, thank you so much for waiting. What was your question? Um, I read your 27-page um, thing again, and I took the class from you many years ago. And at that time, you used 50% um, matte medium when you put the silk on the canvas. And I'm curious to know, this is a two-part question. Um, why you change to Minwax, what's the benefit? And then my other frustration is I get little tiny bubbles, which I don't know they're there until I'm done. And is there any way to fill those bubbles and flatten them out? Okay, yes. Now, I quit using the Nova number 205 because I had two advanced students. I had just opened up a new bottle. Uh -huh. and it was a bad batch and it turned their whole project white after five days of painting. Oh, no. And so I felt like the company let me down. They didn't, they said, oh, well. Okay. So um, now I've been trying everything. I have cabinets full of them. So um, I went back and tried the Nova number 206, which is a gloss. And I like that. Do not use moon wax, um, and I don't. I didn't know that was in my new book. Oh, I will have to look. Do not use the moon wax. I it went in beautifully. We loved it, except that the moisture in the air will create drips on it. Just it just it just drips. Yep. I know. I had one hanging by where we all washed our silk, and I saw these spots, and I went, "What the heck? What the heck?" Um, so it's very susceptible to that. I brought this over to show you. Uh, and this is what is going to be my next thing as soon as my back allows me to stand. So Yvette Allerding uh, went to a, a Zoom class on, on uh, the Equitex. <coughs> I'm sorry, Golden. I'm sorry, Golden. And that's what they said to get. So I've not, I've not even opened it yet. But that's my next one to try. But for now, I'm doing Nova number 206. And you can only get that from the company Artex. They only, they're the only ones that sell it. You can't get it anywhere else. And the little bubbles? They're 
speaking with so many chemists about all of this. Um, it has to do with your water absorption and how much water you're using and the rate of how it absorbs into your silk. So when you get these little air bubbles, just tap them with your, with your finger and they should go right away. The other thing I do is to dry it immediately. And I remember, Katie, you, one of my first, very first students, like yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. So much since then. I hope you see that in your book that um, a lot of new stuff I'm still learning also. Okay? So just tap them with your finger and they should just pop. And then when you dry them with the hair dryer, that should pop them too. Okay? So, thank um, you. So I, I see that there's quite a few people that don't have their cameras on. So I don't, Sue and I can't tell if you have a question. So if you go in the chat, you can raise your hand by in the chat by uh, uh, hovering over your name. And then where it says more, you can raise your hand and we'll see a little icon. It looks, it looks like Kristen has a question. Yes. Hi, Kristen. Hi, I have another question about your brushes. You said that you use different brushes for the different colors and you have them marked with the tape. Um, do you like have a whole set of brushes for each color or is it just like one brush for each color? <laughs> I have 800 cents. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, I just got this turnstile and these uh, has little sections that come out of the turnstile that you can just pick up. So the, the dye is very hard to get out of brushes. And um, so, uh, and, and I had all these on here and it got to be where I just said, well, I'm gonna use these blue because I'm painting blue again. And it's gonna have blue in that. So now I just keep them here. And when I'm painting with the color, I just take out this whole section. So the, I keep brushes for white because it's very, very hard to get the entire color out of the brushes, no matter what I what brush I've used with dyes. So um, I keep white ones. I have a, a white tape on them, and I don't use them for any other color because you get it comes out, even though you think you get it. So yes, and um, mostly if you were to use the two colors. You want to definitely keep your your light color different than your dark color. If I were to have to, when I was doing all these colors and adding darker and darker and darker, if I wanted to go back in and touch up a light part, that dye is going to be stuck in my brush. And then you lose, you know, the whole thing here is keeping your light, keeping that, that light without without covering it up. And once you get your dark brush on there, it's you've lost it. And then and then it becomes flat. So even if you um, uh, do your double brushes, do light and dark if nothing else. And especially if you're going to use a color that's going to grab like like if you were doing a red flower and you wanted to shade some green in there to get that nice dark shade. You go back and touch that green onto your red anywhere, and you have you have dropped that color. You have taken it down. So yes, I have a lot of brushes. This is like living a dream to have one brush. And then there's six different sizes. So not only do I have them um, from what color I have them in in accordance with what size I'm doing. I get all my brushes out ahead of time and lay everything out. And I don't know if you can see this now, but I do quite an extensive practice. This is a plumeria I just did. So I get all my colors down. I write my recipes on here and I always dilute the color out. So here it is undiluted, but see how with that sizing on here, how I can just make a straight edge like that. If I didn't have undercoating on there that I just showed you how to do, you could not blend these. It just would not blend. So I go through quite these uh, harangue of things just to make it. So by the time I get my, my brush to my silk, 
I know exactly the color I want. They've already worked, and so I'm not trying to change change direction or find out like, oh, this isn't anything that I want it when I get out of my silk. So this is all, every time I do this, then when I'm done, I put that piece of silk in with my pattern. So I've got all my notes on there, what I did, and I experiment and voila, yes. And the beauty of it is those brushes are such a great price. They are. $20 for all that. So it's doable, it's very doable. Thanks, Karen. I searched and searched and searched, and I was using the Robert Simmons for years and years and years, and then they quit making them. So I even went to the manufacturer and tried to talk her into still making them. But then I found a set on Amazon. I was just ordering mop brushes wherever I could find them. And they said, well, I said I wanted to sell, sell them, offer them to my students. And they said, oh, well, why don't we just make you your own? Mine had my signature on them. Oh, hoity toity, is that? <laughs> yes. I can't wait. Okay. Next question. Oops. Oh, Nancy, I see. Mr. Green. Yes, hi. Hi, Karen. I took a class from you at the spin convention a couple of years ago. Good to see you. My question has to do with transferring your drawing or your pattern to your silk before you start painting. And um, I, I know you have a fabulous way of doing it, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, I draw my pattern and they're quite intricate. And um, uh, once I draw them, then I color them over with a Sharpie pen. And, um, and you just slide your pattern underneath your silk. And um, I can't get up out of my chair, but I have, I made a little PVC stand and put a piece of foam core underneath it. And it just holds it right um, underneath so you can draw. So you pin your, pin this pattern onto your silk and then just draw it all on from there. So um, holding it by the, the tiny little uh, PVC frame that I made that holds up the, um, the foam core, it's the same height. Now when I use my PVC, so that uh, it's raised up so it doesn't, Go right onto the table. Okay, is that good? Good, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Who else has a question? Well, I came late. I'm sorry, I had the wrong time. Hi, everybody. Hi, Karen. It's Christy. <laughs> Where are you? Well, you might have to scroll, scroll. Oh, you have to right on your piece. Push your finger to the side. Yeah. Uh, do you really want me to touch this? <laughs> well, maybe not. Christy's, uh, Christy came in late, so she's going to be at the end of the second screen. So you might not actually see her. But okay. She's, Let's just spotlight Christy for a second okay. so Karen can see her. I can do that. Oh. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> Up close and personal. Hi, Karen, um, and hi, everybody. This is exciting, and um, I don't know, you might have already answered, but I'm curious about your new background you've been doing, as you did with your um, commission piece with the purple lily and using the spray and all. Um, that's exciting, and it looks beautiful. Can you tell us more about it? The, uh, the clients were very specific on their, on their colors, and I, he wanted me to do the background that would match his uh, his wall. So they gave me a piece of the wall painted, you know, the swatch of the color. So, and he wanted a blue stargazer, which I never knew there was such a thing, but of the day, you know, they're always right. Then he wanted this beige background. And I thought, oh my gosh, the, it was just going to fade from those white edges all over it. So I uh, pulled and pulled and pulled around. And um, when you paint a background, like I showed you with my, when you're doing your colors, 
color swatches like that. If your background is dry, if it doesn't have any of that uh, undercoat on it, it's going to grab whatever you put on there. So I have done it two ways. One way is to spurt on the sizing and practice spurting on a practice thing and uh, actually hold up a paper towel and see if you can zoom it in on where you want to do it. It takes a little bit of practice. I had already spurted on the petals, so it didn't matter to me if there was a little bit of excess that went over the petal. But cover up where you don't want that spray, but wherever you leave a line like that, you will see a difference between where you have spray and where you have a line. So be careful or just don't lay this on your silk to get the line. You have it away from your silk so it still acts as a shield. So I spurted that on and I think I posted a video of it, right? So you all yeah. see it on my post. So you just got to see how I did. And then I took the big brush, very, very little on it. And I used the brush very flat so that I was just getting this edge, very, very soft. Wherever, the spurt, wherever that spurt of sizing is wet on your silk, it attracts the dyes. Your brush is pretty dry. So wherever there is no spray from the spurt, now you're not spraying it going, you're going tsh, tsh, and that's all that you want. So wherever there is no spray, then your brush won't, it'll be like a dry brush. So you're gonna get two different, uh, two different looks by where it grab or it doesn't grab and it's an instant texture, absolutely instant texture. And it is so cool. It's very different. It gives a whole different look of like salt. And it's an uneven texture. So um, so that's what makes it so cool, where it grabs and where it doesn't. Now, what I did on this one too, this background, which I don't know that I showed it or talked about it in there, but I took my far, far away spray. And so I already got that first one done. Now I spray ahead and find this like this, enough to get it wet, but not drippy wet. And then did not put any more dye on my brush. I just kept brushing into this alcohol spray far, far away. So what it does is it starts using up your dye. And then pretty soon there's nothing on your brush and you fade off into nothing. That is a cool background. Mm -hmm. That one is so good because um, you can use different colors. I went back on top of this spray close to the, to the um, uh, edges with some sapphire blue just to, and along with that brown, it changed a little bit of color of the blue, but it cooled off that brown mm -hmm. or that beige background just enough to pop those white petals. So you can do your whole background like this by spraying a hat. So you've seen Mitch that we did, I've done several classes in it to where the, the parent is screeching, landing on ice. And so the whole background is just ice and patches of, of uh, snow. So to do that and get a really soft background is just to keep spraying ahead of wherever you're going to paint with the far, far away, and uh, and then just keep blending it in. But you have to be careful when you have all of this wet and you're next to your petals or hair feathers or whatever, your, your dye is really so thinking, this is so fun just to go all over the place, I'll just keep going. So you have to be careful when you get to the edge that it doesn't get over in, into uh, your main painting. So that could be with any background that you do. Could I answer that? Yeah, very thoroughly. So just to make sure though, um, you when you spray your magic sizing, right, your spurt, right, you get in there with your dye immediately following the spurt, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah, because you want to catch that moisture still too and, and the combination of the moist and the dry. 
silk areas. So to make it so look textured. About the width of your hand. Okay. All right. And so then awesome. when you what happens too is when you have overspray like that, and maybe you don't want it, it 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 will define how your dye goes on once it dries, once it's left to dry on okay. your silk. If left to dry on its own, it will leave that shape. Sure. So if you don't want that shape, dry it right after you're done. Any overspray that you don't want. But if you leave it on there, you'll get instant texture when you go to paint over it again. Not as intense, and you can't do that dry stuff, but you can spray it over again too. These are, I'm so glad you're asking me this because this is something that I think is so cool. And however did I come up with these things? It was like, try it, like experiment. This, this whole thing, of what I have come from 2002 when KD was with me has all been experienced. And think, what if? Well, what if I did that? <laughs> <laughs> you are with me in a class. Mm -hmm. You will be having a blank piece of silk for you to do that, to say, what if I did that? Go over and do it. That's, and then the thing is, then share with everybody else, let us know what you found. I right. learned a lot from my students when they, so when they try to, okay? All right, so we have, Joan, it looks yeah. like Connie and Phyllis. Well, I think, I think Connie is next. Okay. Hi, Joyce. Hi, hi Karen. Um, I don't see so her. my question is- Let me, question let me is, grab her and spotlight her so you can see her. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. My, my question is uh, on your pieces, do you spray everywhere with your sizing on most, or do you not spray with your sizing and just spotlight this, the individual sections like you showed? It all depends on what I'm doing. Um, I use it, it's habit forming, I have to warn you, if there's a little warning on there, once you start playing with it, it's habit forming. I do it on almost all of my uh, petals. Uh, the darker the dye, the more intense the color of the dye, the more intense your texture is going to show. But when you look at flowers, especially like in the center, uh, where it's nice and dark and it's just coming from the settle center, that's where it's dark. That's where you're going to get all of this fabulous texture and it makes it look so organic, I think. And that's the prelude too to doing the water drops. You've got a, you know, a bazillion water drops already started that you can just enhance from that. So I don't use the texture on places that I want to have a smooth petal, a smooth uh, design. But say you wanted to do like a, an orchid and you know how the orchid has like little holes in it almost? So if you would use your sizing on your dive when it's wet and do those spurts, it, um, it gives it a whole new texture and it looks very, very or like Orchid ish. And um, if you do it wet, it's way different. If you do it dry, it's way different. And if you wanted to get into a little corner of, say, your, your petal, your flower, and you didn't want to get it uh, spread out all over the place, looking for like that. I use a uh, a little sponge. So see the little tentacles on this sponge here? When you find a sponge, try and find one with big holes in it or di several different kinds of holes and you tear off the piece. So you can dip this into your sizing that has been sprayed and you know, that, not from your can, but then I, I also posted a video of how I spray my whole can. So that, that one Joan and Sue had today, 
Yeah. But so say if I only wanted to get that texture in a teeny weeny little spot, just dip a teeny weeny little corner of this and then I dab, dab, dab it on my wrist or on a paper towel. You don't want to get a lot on it. If you get too much on it, then you get a big blob and then, then that makes a big mess. So just dab this on in the corner that you want it to stay and then go back with your smaller brush and do the scrubbing. Now you saw how I scrub. I scrub the whole petal is scrubbed. The whole thing I'm doing with my brushes and the reason why I like these so well is that you are moving that dye. You are pushing that edge. Same thing you're gonna do about texturing on your, uh, with your sizing on a, on a sponge. So if you put too much on your brush, and if you were to take like a big round brush and slap dye on there, you've lost it all. It'll just overpower it all. Okay? One last thing I would like to say before oh, yeah. I mute it again. I want publicly to thank you for helping my Haitian painters. Oh my gosh. This is making me emotional. They are so awesome. Connie, you have just you have started a, a life for those kids. And they blow me away with what they do. They probably have have every pattern that I've ever done. <laughs> but they just uh, keep blowing me away every time. And I hope to make it out to my studio someday. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Phyllis, you're you're next. So un unmute yourself. <laughs> Two thousand and two was a good year, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, um, I was curious when you did that beautiful, huge blue to purple flower. Did you steam? and protect the blue flower before you started the background? No, it's just be real careful, but you can see this oh. brush I used. And when, when I spray the head, I think I mentioned too, I only spray as wide as my hand. So I'm working in this area and then, and then I spray and work my way up. No, I was very careful. But I don't like steaming once much less. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was, but I was really curious about that because I would be so prone to want to protect it. Oh, well, you saw the plastic I had all over it, right? Oh, man. It, when I did that other commission of the roots with the white egret, it was six feet by four feet. And I spent, I think it was seven weeks on that. And mm. Um, I did a lot of, if you look at it closely, you can see where I used the sponge. I, I uh, got the root wet and, and painted it. And then while it was still wet, I did all that sponge, which turned it all gnarly. I, I, never, um, I never steam ahead of time because um, a couple of things is because I paint in such a little area because I'm such a mess. I'm painting like this and it's big and I paint upright and I take and I've seen that my whole uh, brush goes across the whole bottom of it. So I, I save that that I can go back in and add or subtract or far, far away spray or something. So if I had steamed that, I lose that option. Great, thanks. Okay. It's Unbelievable, but we're almost to the end. Do you, is there one more question that somebody that hasn't asked a question yet? Okay, come on, I see smile. Smile! Go ahead, jump in. So, so go ahead and like Sue Sanders. Oh, N Naya? Yeah, hi, Karen, how are you? Where is she, where is she? <laughs> Hang on, she's on the second page. There we go. Hello, Karen, how are you? Missing you so much. Can you see this painting? I did it uh, two years back, 
with your technique the silk painting yeah beautiful can i answer yeah. your question yeah i it was a very informative like i revised all my knowledge that i did with you and uh, it was good and i am a little like lost with this soy so, uh, soy wax you know uh, how uh, like which uh, new uh, tools you are using nowadays to apply the soy wax especially like in uh, like in a finer line uh, that is like little hard for me to do well uh, i have, these are my new brushes so they they do make it easier my okay. new tiny brushes and put less dye on your brush. So the other thing is keep the dye to the tip of your brush. And I have, I could show you my floor because I haven't cleaned up yet. <laughs> it's the blue. Uh, so a lot, I have paper in my hands all the time and I touch my, br touch my brush to the paper to see how much I have on my brush because you get too much and then you lose, you lose all control of it. So that's super important. Nyla, you're doing beautiful works. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I learned it from you and I want to come back to your I studio. To <laughs> yeah. I, somebody asked me, when am I teaching again? And um, uh, uh, I don't know when it's, uh, when it's safe. When it's safe, and then Rick and I have to. I I was telling uh, Rick and I have become slugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we used to, before when we were teaching like almost nonstop, we were on the go all the time, all the time. And then all of a sudden, it goes off. And so um, I have reorganized my studio. When you come back, you'll say, "Wow!" And um, I, it's really funny that I've been blessed to get commission after commission this, this time that, that um, I've been alone here, me, myself, and I. So I've had time to paint for me, and so uh, it's been very different. So we're excited to do it, but I told Rick he can't start, we won't start till he starts walking again. <laughs> me too, actually. Me too. Somebody asked me too, what type of... Uh, uh, clear resist do I use? Well, so I'm not like the look of clear resist since I first started. <laughs> it's not for me. I like being able to get into the nitty gritty of the look. So, um, Aja. I'm sorry, what? What? I can keep talking. I think someone was just unmuted and I will go through and make sure everybody's muted again. Okay. Well, when I did use, I, I'm a kind of gold kind of gal. I use the bronze resist. I mostly, I mostly used that. And um, so I've gone back to fool around to see if there is a clear resist. I, I didn't like to resist that. And I did play around with it. They made me. And um, I, I just, I just uh, like being what I call irresistible. And so that led me to seek other ways of, of painting to where I learned my uh, technique. And it was all in the beginning from just uh, experimenting. So, um, but what I will say and what I, I've to my students is the really important thing is to keep and okay, pretend this is silk. You want to keep your nib onto the silk and you want to keep it at an angle to where when you squeeze it in here, that it's going to penetrate your silk to the back because that's what's going to hold your line. So see the angle that I'm pushing right now? It's like the angle for success. That is, it is going directly going to penetrate to the silk. If I were to do it at an angle, like sideways like this, you can see where the point is different. 
it's not going into the silk, it's going on top and it will lay on top of the silk. So that's how you get big clumpy lines and some lines that never ever dry and uh, makes takes away from the hand of your silk. So you're going to, first of all, push your nib into the silk, then squeeze. And you don't move the point until you see it coming out of the nib. You squeeze, then when you see it squeeze, then you start moving, but you wanna keep that angle so that it's penetrating through the silk. Okay, is that a good help? Yes. Okay. Um, we are right at one hour and we promised Karen, Karen, I don't know if you all know, but she's recovering from surgery. So isn't she incredible to come and spend time with us? I hope it's been um, a blessing for her to see everybody as well. Um, and, 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 she, and she did share with me that she'd be willing to ha have another discussion so we can address some of the questions that we didn't get to tonight. Yeah, and then the demo too. Yeah. I, I tried sitting last, I did that one demo last night and about did me in. So I can't sit yet. And so um, I, I'm happy to share. So uh, let me know. I will be back. And we will send you a recording. And um, again, if you did not somehow get the downloads that we sent. And then there's that other little video that we need to send as well, right, Joan? Uh, yeah. Did, another <laughs> video that Karen sent today. Um, so we will catch everything up. So you should have your, your homework, that 20 whatever sheets to do, and you'll have a recording of this. We usually will keep it up for a couple of weeks. We don't have a big enough account to keep things up forever. Um, and maybe we can get it posted somewhere where you can access this later too. So watch in the next couple of weeks, take notes. Um, don't hesitate to, to contact us if you didn't get the video that we talked to you about that Karen mentioned as well. And also when you do your practicing, will you send me a picture on Messenger? I can't sit at the computer yet. But I would love to see when you practice and uh, you get a gold star, you know. <laughs> yeah. I see my students know. Literal, <laughs> literal gold stars. Literal yes. Gold stars. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I really want to see what you're doing. And if you do it, and oh, I see a heart. I saw a, a sign from Kathy Miller. Thank you. Um, I would love to see what you're doing. And and experiment with it and then be prepared to share. I think. That's the whole thing that it's about. Oh, I see my boyfriend in the background. Your boyfriend. <laughs> okay, I love you. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I think she's You're talking about Jackie, here. if anybody's wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I loved it. Thank you so much for yeah. I it, loved it. And and if if you guys need anything from from this that we haven't sent yet yet, um, I put our email address again in the chat. So just copy it from there and send us your requests. Again, I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks again, everyone, and thanks, Karen. I'll stop the recording, and but if you need to stay a second, that's okay.